Hello everybody and welcome to a new YouTube video. This is Danny, also known as I Annihilate, twitch.tv slash Annihilate. And today I wanted to go over the best position 4 heroes. This list is going to be kind of similar to position 5 heroes, which I'll cover in the next video. Because I want to get every roll done. Um, there are a lot of really good supports right now. In fact, support players have been eating for years, honestly. There's been a broken support hero in every single patch for years now. Um, supports are eating good. So, these top five heroes, once again, if this is your first introduction to this type of content for me, these top five heroes are the best heroes in the patch for the role, in my opinion. Um, and these ones at the bottom, you can replace some at the top if you're better at them. I think they're, like, very close to the five on top. Or they're just, like, if these heroes are picked or banned, these are your next options. They're very, like, they're honorable mentions, right? So, without further ado, let's get on with it. Which doctors first up? Voodoo Festoration is probably one of the best facets in the game, if not the best facet in the game. This turns your Voodoo Restoration into a screen-wide Radiance level 1, and it still heals you. It doesn't heal your allies, of course. Most people have been going, like, max Voodoo Restoration with 2 points Maledict and not even getting stun. You can maybe get stun in some lanes. And there's a, cup, there's a game where I pretty much got a Rampage at 15 minutes with this hero in a team fight. Um, I had, like, a couple Null Talismans and Arcane Boots, and that's all it really took. I just kept my heal going the whole time, getting all my spells off, staying alive, and... It's, it's just ridiculous, the damage output. The laning phase, it's impossible to trade with this hero. You're basically going to be getting both of them with this at once, too. It's it's like probably the most efficient spell in the game. Heals you for half and does like giga damage to both uh, enemy laners. You can play this as 5 or 4. Again, this is for 4s. But, yeah, if this hero is available in my rank, uh, like rank 1000 Europe, about rank 100 NA, if it doesn't get picked by both teams and banned people cry in the chat about it. That's how strong it is. Uh, there's only a couple of those heroes in this list that are like, if you don't pick, you're probably going to lose at high rank. Um, and yeah, this is one of them. Most people just get like maybe a Null Talisman, Guardian Greaves, and just going from there, you can get your Aghanims or your Ag Shard by consuming the item you get, the Gree Gree from the innate ability. Yeah, very, very good hero. Hey guys, just a friendly reminder that 77% of you aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you do want more content and want to be up to date with the latest and greatest Dota 2 content out there on the YouTubes, please subscribe. Thank you. Have a good day. Similar power level, Weaver support. I think you can play this hero in any single role. Um, rarely you see it mid. I think it would still actually be pretty good mid, but it's just going to get picked by any of the other four roles first since mid is usually last pick, and obviously a little better in the side lane, just the synergy for tower diving and whatnot with the bugs. Um, minus armor is always great in like a dual lane situation because both of you can hit. Just a hero that's just ridiculous. The facet's not like too OP. Uh, slowing them and going faster is nice. The main benefit of this hero, e even like beyond talents or item builds or whatever like weaver support uses vessel and glipnir really well glipnir is in a really good spot for supports or cores especially universal heroes but getting to have sakuchi level one and basically a free spell right in the early game the bonus damage on gemini attack is nice but for the most part just a double hit is good enough to win a trade or to get a kill in the early game with the blood grenade so at level one you have sakuchi and a double hit and then at level 2, you also have the bugs. So you're basically level 3 at level 2. And you can snowball this throughout the whole game. Just another crazy hero in the lane. Um, not so much from the facet like I talked about, but just because you you have such an insane power spike in lane. Roam very well. Just Support Reaver has been viable before. It's just even better now. Clockwork, a little more interesting. Um, people are getting the big cogs. Cogs are ridiculous. I think everybody is maxing them. I still see some games where people max battery assault, but they're putting, like, they're going, like, 4-4-0 four, four, for the most part. I haven't seen many people skill Rocket Flare early. You can trap someone in Cogs and just shoot a million Cogs at them, and it just drains their entire mana pool and HP. Zero is ridiculous. I, I like, so many times 
I see someone get put in cogs and they just get bounced around for literally five seconds until their mana is gone. Um, really fun to play, really not fun to play against. Even just like putting the cogs down and like auto attacking them to bounce them at people, you're basically playing air hockey. It's just really cool. Um, as far as item builds go, I've seen a bunch of different stuff. For the most part, like vessel is still okay. You can get drum boots, you can get like glimmer, you can get anything you want really. Uh, you do farm like decently quick with the with the battery assault if you need to be farming, but the amount of kills you'll get it's just by whatever the game calls for really. So like a really versatile hero in that respect. Next up is Dark Willow, Thorny Minister Thicket by far the better facet, especially for support. <laughs> Anytime I play against Dark Willow, which is like probably one third of the games, this hero is like the most popular support hero, honestly, that doesn't get banned. She puts the Bramble Maze on the floor and I just get mad. Like, there's just so many brambles everywhere. It's it's impossible to miss with the extra brambles. And, like, heaven forbid in a team fight with the shard as well. There's just brambles all over the screen. As far as, like, the pixie dust thing goes, I don't think it's a big deal. It's not bad. I don't know if you're ever going to, like, use your W to healing salve or something. Um, I don't think it works with magic stick or anything like that. I don't think it's like heal amp. It's just HP regen. So I don't know what it wouldn't really synergize with. I guess you get to heal a little bit. But regardless, uh, plays pretty much the same as before item build wise. You get like Yules and Blink. You can get um, Midas into Agonims for the late game. You know, maybe you want to be more of a core Willow in this game, you know. Vessel's fine, but for the most part, just stuff to keep yourself alive. Glimmer, Force, Yules, mostly Yules to set up your uh, Bramble Maze or to Yules Curse Crown people to set up. Yeah, great catch, great team fight. I love. I still love the change from like a year or so ago where you can Bedlam allies instead of yourself. It makes the hero a lot less like dangerous to get your spells off. And yeah, she's a good hero. Spirit Breaker, the everybody loves a good broken. Spirit Breaker. Now... I actually think that both facets are kind of viable. I have seen some people run and balanced, but one of the easiest ways to catch Spirit Breaker is after he's done his charge, because that's kind of his way out a lot of the times. Like, how many times do you try to gank a Spirit Breaker and he just charges across the map? Just, like, stuns everybody as he does it. Especially with Bulldoze, you use all your stuns, and then he just charges away. With Bull Rush, it feels like he charges through your whole team, and he's just out of there. It's it's just the way the hero plays and fights, or even on the map when he's one one shotting creep waves with, and during Shadow Blade, just feels really good to just run away really fast for a few seconds. Again, very similar like play style. Something I really like about the facet patch, like seven point three six, compared to a lot of other big patches, is most heroes' identities are exactly the same. They're just a little better. And this facet is a perfect example of that. He just gets to Spirit Breaker a little bit better than before. Uh, innate ability, hopefully this gets changed at some point. I don't like abilities that just, now your team gets more experience or your team gets more gold. I feel like they're a little flavorless and kind of like abusable. I don't know how good this ability is on uh, exactly either. It feels pretty good with the wisdom runes, I guess. But yeah, for the most part, phase boot Shadow Blade. Maybe you can get an Agonims later, maybe an Octarine Core, but very simple hero, very fun to play. And we'll move on to the honorable mentions. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on these. I, I think I went over too much the, on the carry video, but basically Pudge is not a griefing support anymore. I know. A lot of people over the years are traumatized by their Pudge sitting in the trees fishing for hooks. Well... Now, with the facet Flayer's hook that's been buffed, if Pudge does actually randomly land a hook standing in the trees all lane, he'll just win you the lane. It does like half their HP. This does 8 million damage, 1500 cast range level 1. It goes faster, it does your laundry, it cleans your house. This is like the... It's nuts. This facet is ridiculous for support Pudge. So many first bloods at the rune with smoke level 1. Uh, bounty runes, that is. So many like kill potentials on other lands it's it just it's crazy they basically put rupture on his hook right that's always been a classic combo uh hook uh rupture into hook or rupture into magnus skewer or something it's just like it's just so much damage 
Flesh Sheep is kind of free, which is nice. You don't have to put, like, too many points in Meat Shield. You'll just get it over time. Um, yeah. Plays exactly the same as before, except better. That's always a good sign in this patch. Rubik is one hero I'm not too sure about. It feels good in, like... In games where a lot of these other heroes are banned, I've seen Rubik pop off. I've also seen Rubik steal Sakuchi and pop off. I've seen Rubik steal, um, what's it called? Uh, I mean, Hook, but uh, Brambles and stuff like that. There's just like some good heroes it's good against. I don't know as far as facets. I feel like it's pretty split. I think you either get, I mean, it just depends what heroes you're against, right? If you're against a hero with one spell you want and you want it to have a lower mana cost, go with that one. If you're against a hero that you can like spam spells um then like i'm, I'm sure arcane accumulation is great if you could steal like sticky napalm or something spamble I, I don't know exactly i haven't i haven't tried too much of these facets really but yeah i think like there isn't an objectively better one it just depends on the game so i can't really help out with that and like just classic rubik items arcane boots aether lens blink yules force uh, maybe Aghanims in some games to steal two spells. Really fun to play. Rubik's another was one of those like timeless popular heroes and good time. Hoodwink is one of those heroes that like got kind of nerfed, but still strong. Like you used to just get go nuts for free, but tree bounce trick shot is kind of better the way it's played. So like in, in a lot of fights, you would prefer the bonus cast range on Go Nuts to land a long-range bushwhack or uh, even to cast your items or something. But a lot of the facets that have just turned out to be better in this patch have been early-game lane-centric facets. Because if you have a good lane, that sets up for a good mid-game, and it snowballs from there. Dota's a very snowball game. You get ahead in the early game, you'll be ahead in the mid-game for the most part, unless you throw. Um being able to acorn bounce somebody solo is nuts. And that's basically like the identity of the hero has been to max acorn shot for a long time now. And it just buffs that play style. Very similar to last patch, just toned down a lot. Because like, like I said, like you'd much rather have the like cast range in late game fights. So if you don't have a good early game, it's going to feel pretty bad. And maybe this hero will get some sort of a change, but still quite popular. Phoenix has been a bit of a weird hero. I almost want to say it's better as a core with the Dying Light facet. I think the Dying Light facet is better no matter what. I've seen... I've lost to some mid-Phoenixes and felt pretty bad about it. It feels ridiculous that this hero, like, has, like, this free of a spell level 1. Plus the Blinding Sun. Feels very hard to lane against, for the most part. I've seen a lot of three Phoenixes do really well. But classically, this is a 4 or a 5 hero. And still very good. If you're a Phoenix player, this is a good patch for you, I think. Phoenix is in a good spot. Just not the same power level as these top 5 heroes. So keep that in mind for all you Phoenix spammers out there. Last but not least, good luck getting this hero. I still think it's one of the most picked carries, even if though it fell off kind of a bit. Mid players sometimes want the want this hero. I've even seen this hero picked as a five here and there. I don't I don't like that that much. Um, but the crash landing facets for tiny is really good. It lets you farm your blink pretty quickly. Most people are maxing toss, and toss is also very non-committal. You, it's also better for like let's say you're playing the classic tiny centaur. Now you can max your toss and throw your centaur in. And it does a billion damage without having you worry about your combo for, like, Avatos. Um, very good, like, buff to the hero's early game play style overall. Still plays the same later on where you're going to be getting Blink. You're going to get Yules, maybe Force, so you can reset in fights. Um, I think I've still seen people start with the tree level 1 for the most part in some lanes. But you can play the, like, pull the creeps behind style and stuff. And, yeah, very solid hero right now. Just again, free MMR easy mode heroes at the top. Heroes you need to have some proficiency with at the bottom to make up for the power level you're losing from not picking one of these better ones. And yeah, that's about it for the position fours for this patch. Loving 7.36B. Uh, let me know what four heroes I missed out on maybe or that you think are really good. Because I think like maybe in the C patch, 
whenever that will be, a lot of these top peers will get nerfed and it'll kind of shake the meta up again. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching. Please make sure to like subscribe, maybe comment, like. I don't know if there's a bell or something. Usually people on YouTube t sell you to smash a bell or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, have a good one. Enjoy your games this patch. See ya.